future-proof. Nothing is ever future-proof. I find that I often speak of time, sometimes in rhymes, and that is because I reflect on the past, present, and future when I refinish and restore pieces of furniture. I often wonder where it came from. I reflect on how I found it, and then I think about where it will go. It's a mental exercise for me, wondering why the designer chose to use teak on a floating desk. Wondering why they put a veneer over particle board in some areas and instead used solid pieces in others. These are things that make sense to me from a manufacturer's perspective, but longevity for a piece of thin wood veneer over particle board can be cut short by a forgotten glass of ice water. I found this desk and chair at two different thrift stores. They're both teak, and while the chair doesn't fit under the desk, they would stage well together, so I did both pieces at the same time. The desk has finish issues on the top and some areas where there are small chips of veneer, but overall it's in great condition and even has both keys for the drawers. The chair, however, has loose joints on one side that are going to need to be re-glued and finish that is in rough shape, particularly on the arms. The cushions on the chair are in excellent condition and I'm pretty sure that's the original fabric on them. I'm going to end up removing the cushions from the chair and I'm going to put them inside so that they don't get dirty from being in the garage. I tried to remove the bottom apron from the seat cushion and I realized after a good 20 minutes of trying to unscrew them that they weren't coming off. They were in great condition, so I left them on and we'll see how they look later with the chair once it's refinished. Worst case scenario, I can tape the cushion up and refinish the aprons if I need to. Since I'm taking the chair apart already, I was able to easily pull apart the right side of the chair that had loose mortise and tenon joints. We'll re-glue this after we've removed the finish. Based off what I saw around the drawer faces, the top of this desk is likely a veneer with solid teak around the edges. In my experience, teak veneer tends to be very thin on pieces, which makes it ridiculously easy to sand through. For that reason, I'm going to use Stripwell QCS Vintage Finish Remover to remove the finish. There is a watermark in the corner of the desk. It's the only area of the desk that has a very dark blotch on it. And there's also UV damage that shows up on the top of the desk where there may have been a mat covering the center of the top. For my first attempt at removing the discolored areas, I'm going to do what I intended on doing after stripping the finish, and that is to lightly hand sand using 150 grit sandpaper. There are a few areas on the corners of the desk that have been chipped or have worn veneer. I'm just going to use some wood filler to fill in those spots. I chose red oak because it was the color that closely matched teak. 
Since I sanded the top, I can see the darker square in the center of the top still. I'm not sure if this is going to show through, so I'm just going to use some mineral spirits to clean up the sanding dust and get a better look at what the top would look like if I applied some finish. Thankfully, I don't see the discolored square on the top when I apply the mineral spirits, but the corner stain is still peeking through, and since I suspect that it's water damage, I'm just gonna use some oxalic acid on that spot. I rarely apply oxalic acid to a small little spot, but this is just such a small area that it makes sense to only apply it to the affected area. And that seemed to work and brighten up the spot quite a bit. Still slightly discolored in that area, but it looks a lot better than it did. For the chair, I'm going to use my electric finishing sander. The chair is made out of solid wood, so I'm not worried about sanding through the veneer. I just need to be careful not to alter the shape with the sander. Before I apply finish to the desk and chair, I'm going to re-glue the part of the chair that I took apart. If you're ever assembling or disassembling an entire chair, I recommend that you label the parts and where they go. I ended up using the other part of the chair to guide my assembly of the side that I took apart. I sealed the desk and chair with several coats of lacquer. After I applied my first coat, however, I noticed that the water spot on the top had a slight odd color to it, so I just touched it up with a light coat of walnut toner lacquer. I've been meaning to try out Walrus Oil Furniture Butter. It's an oil and wax wood finish and I've seen a lot of woodworkers use it. 
Overall, it was very easy to apply and really made the inner drawers pop while also providing protection. Next up, I'm going to reassemble the chair. It wasn't until reassembly that I found out why I couldn't remove the bottom piece from the chair cushion. It turns out there's a bolt mechanism inside the attachments to the bottom cushion, similar to what you'd find in IKEA furniture, where you twist the bolt so that you can thread the screw through the bolt. Since finishing these pieces, the desk has already been sold and is off in its new home. Single chairs like this are a bit harder to sell in my area, but hopefully it finds a good home soon. Thanks for watching.